Mark, I am delighted to personally congratulate you on what I deem to be the most disruptive news in the rare earth industry for 2023. Uh, it's going to propel you forward in 2024. Congratulations on your MOU for a JV with Astron. Impressive. Thank you, Tracy. We're very excited about the news. Well, let's talk about the news. I mean, Basically, I believe, and I'm not quoting you exactly because I'm not reading anything here, um, that this will pr provide a supply chain for the U.S. for decades to come in the rare earth industry. Did I misread that or is that correct? No, you did not misread that. And I think that is one of the most important um, differentiators here. This is not a small deal. This is a huge deal for reducing the United States dependence on critical elements, particularly rare earths, um, by signing a deal with a, 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 a well-advanced project in Australia to supply monazite for the White Mesa mill in material quantities. My phone lit up after your news release happened. Of course, I'm the founder of the Critical Minerals Institute, so of course it did. And I received, for instance, a phone call from Peyton Jackson in Denver, who said that he didn't believe the public understood how competitive your rare earth processing is because price, it's all about price. If you listen to Jack Lipton, he's going to compete with the Chinese. We have to be able to produce at a cost effective price. And Peyton's angle was how cost effective your processing is. Is he correct? And can you comment on this? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, 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 the biggest issue for us is that when you look at uh, establishing the capability to process rare earths, you know, you're talking billions of dollars, billions of dollars to, uh, to establish that processing. And we've been able to uh, start what we call phase one uh, for a thousand tons of NDPR per year processing uh, for capital costs of less than $25 million because we're utilizing existing infrastructure existing infrastructure with people that understand SX right now. So, so the competitiveness of being in the United States, uh, in Utah, uh, where there is low cost of power, uh, abundance of water, um, and the infrastructure is a differentiator that nobody is, enjoys that I know of in the world. Well, I'll tell you, someone in Denver does. But I have this list of questions. I also had a very long uh, conversation with Christopher Ecclestone out of London this morning, who was going on about monazite and the competitive angle of this news release pertaining to the monazite. Can you explain to our audience what he means? Well, when you, when you look at monazite, and if you go back, um, say, four years ago, five years ago, monazite was a waste product because it was radioactive and nobody wanted it. Matter of fact, people buried it and it had zero value. Well, people have woke up and realized, and particularly the Chinese woke up a long time ago and realized that monazite was a key foundation for their rare earth um, supply chain that they put into place over the last number of years. And energy fuels was really a first mover when it comes to realizing that we could handle the radioactive uh, aspects of monazite, extract the uranium, uh, and produce a rare earth carbonate. So, so, so really, the the focus on monazite is fair, is is relatively new. Um, at least um, recently, I mean, people have processed monazite in the past, and they've got upside down uh, on the uh, radioactivity issues that are not an issue for us at the White Mesa Mill. So, so the combination of the low capital costs. Uh, the low operating costs in terms of working in, 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 in Utah with very skilled people and low power cost water, as I mentioned before, is a magical uh, combination to come up with a very, very competitive uh, processing cost for, for rare earths globally. I still remember doing an interview with Constantine Karanopoulos about how this was the 800-pound gorilla in the room, which you've solved. And Christopher actually mentioned to me that he perceived this deal to be the catalyst for revolutionizing monazite as a source for rare earths because you can do this and deal with the radioactive aspect of the extraction process. Did I get that right, Mark? 
Yeah, yeah, and and, and again, monetize um, the the uranium, and 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 anyone else that's looking at uh, monazite sources other than China, they're looking at putting the uranium back in the ground, and uranium prices are up, and and that makes a, a significant contributor um, when it comes to things like transport or whatnot of the class seven monazite uh, to White Mesa. So no, you're absolutely getting it right. Um, the ability to deal with the radionuclides, the deal to monetize um, those radionuclides to add additional value um, are all key elements. And the fact that monazite has great distributions of NDPR and heavies, the DY and the TB um, mainly, um, you know, th th those, those are the secrets to going forward in a competitive way, uh, particularly with the Chinese. And, and you just went in the same in the right direction because that's where the next question was headed. Was I don't think people appreciate that you've got the magnetic materials, you've got the heavies, you've got the neodymium, you've got the presidium, you've got the terbium, and some of the companies that get a lot of press coverage don't actually have that. They have the lights. And the U.S. government, what we need for our defense production is we need the magnetic materials, and as Peter Cashin uh, calls them, the marketable commodities, which is what energy fuels has, has, and has. So again, do I have this right, and should you not be the front runner um, here? Everybody should be looking at energy fuels because you've got the most valuable of, the, of these commodities, of these marketable commodities and magnetic materials. Yes? Correct, correct. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's really the distributions. And, and, and that is the key element here, is having the dis distributions of those uh, magnetic elements required for electrification uh, and being able to deal with um, the, the radioactivity. And, and, and as I said, uh, have said before, is that White Mesa is a solvent extraction facility and it's been recovering uranium vanadium for over 40 years with SX. So the addition of our phase one solvent extraction system, which is absolutely well advanced right now, people are bolting it together and plumbing it and wiring um, the phase one is in our wheelhouse as a company. Mark, I've, tr I've looked all over the world for rare earth beak stock opportunities and potential. This is something that I've done for a living for 15 years. I was unfamiliar with the Astron project, the Donald project. This is phenomenal. Can you tell us a little bit more about who found it? Because this is an incredibly impressive project. I've reached out to analysts in Australia this morning, and they're just going on about it. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about this? Well, the, the Astron um assets, uh, the Donald Project in Australia has been around for many, many years, obviously, because, you know, this stuff isn't just, you know, created overnight, the deposit itself. But uh, it's a project that um, uh, that has been had some technical issues with the fact that it's very fine grained. And, and over the course of the last uh, few decades, they've come up with better ways of dealing with that fine grained nature. But it also has very high concentrations of monazite. It's um, a very high concentrate uh, heavy mineral sand deposit with, with high concentrations of monazite, and, um, and it's very large. And, and I think one of the key aspects of it, it's in Australia. Uh, it's already permitted. It has the, uh, all the licenses required to, to, to move forward. There's some final engineering work that has to be done, um, and it's permitted. So, you know, this is something that that we can invest in potentially, we still got to complete the due diligence and be, you know, advancing and securing monazite in the next couple of years in material quantities. And, and I think when people look at the $122 million potential investment, um, we're basically about half of that is just the buy-in to the project. So everything else from there on is shared equally with our partner. Um, on the project. So it's really around $61, $62 million to buy into this project to have up to around 15,000 tons of monazite per year for potentially up to 50 years. So it's not a small deposit, and um, but it is in a good jurisdiction and being uh, permitted and advanced uh, is absolutely critical at this point in time particularly when you're looking at securing offtakes with 
you know, some of the automobile manufacturers, tier ones um, globally. Jack Lipton, the number one technology metals expert in the world, called this move genius. And I, the founder of the Critical Minerals Institute, am saying this is the most disruptive move for this sector in 2023. Congratulations, Mark. It is a pleasure to get this update from you. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. And it's our pleasure to give the update.